Did you know that over 44 million people around the world have Alzheimer's? And in the US alone, over 6 million people suffer from this form of dementia. So in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about how to prevent dementia, especially Alzheimer's, and I'm gonna give you some natural tips on how to do that. Hi, I'm Dr. Wendy Myers, founder of MyersDetox.com. And in this video, I wanna give you some natural ways to help prevent dementia and Alzheimer's. So I know people wanna take a magic pill for every ill, but that's not the solution here. This is about diet, lifestyle, and detoxification, reducing stress, and some other tips I'm gonna go over to prevent this form of dementia that's affecting so many families today. And this video is especially important for you if one of your family members has Alzheimer's or you're genetically predisposed to Alzheimer's. So we have a lot to cover in this video. So first we're gonna explore some of the symptoms of Alzheimer's and what to look out for. So depending on the person and the progression of the disease, symptoms of Alzheimer's can look very, very different. So memory loss is one of the most common symptoms, but other symptoms can include repeating statements or questions over and over, getting lost in familiar places, having mood swings, and even distrusting others. Some of the other symptoms can include depression, apathy, laziness, uh, social withdrawal, irritability, aggressiveness, changes in sleep habits, wandering, um, loss of inhibition, and difficulty concentrating. Other symptoms that get easily overlooked is delusion, like for example, being convinced someone is stealing from you. So if you spot huge mood swings without any apparent reason, just be on the lookout for that, and that could be a precursor. And just a side note, having these symptoms doesn't mean you have Alzheimer's. These symptoms could be the result of many, many different health conditions, but they're just things that are shown in the research that Alzheimer's patients exhibit depending on the progression of the disease. So right now, I'm gonna go over five tips to protect and support your brain. So let's talk about what you can do on a daily basis to prevent and even reverse this debilitating disease. Number one, try a lower carbohydrate diet. Usually your body burns glucose as its primary fuel source because it's easy to come by. And because so many people eat way more carbohydrates than their body can handle at any one given moment, it really floods the body with way too much sugar and that can damage all those tiny blood vessels in the brain. So many people with Alzheimer's, they have impaired glucose metabolism. So when you eat a really high carbohydrate diet, high sugar diet, the brain is not able to utilize that glucose effectively. And then the energy flow to the brain cells can be impaired. You can also try a keto diet temporarily. So doing a keto diet is a very, very low, low carbohydrate diet. And this diet will help to turn on ketones. So when you lower your carbohydrates, your body turns on this emergency backup system called ketones and the brain can run on ketones. So ketones are great because they're very anti-inflammatory and they're neuroprotective. But just a word of caution, I don't think keto diet is something you should do long-term. It's great to do for a few months, maybe on a short-term basis, see how you feel. Some people may need to do it on a longer-term basis, but you kind of have to judge how you feel how like, symptoms improve. There's a lot of research showing that the keto diet is neuroprotective, so it's something worth exploring. So number two, watch out for heavy metals. So I talk about this a lot, heavy metals interfere in brain function. They cause nerve damage. Heavy metals deposit in the fat cells in the brain. So namely, the ones that are most damaging to the brain are cadmium, lead, mercury, manganese, and aluminum. These are very, very damaging to brain cells. Aluminum outright kills brain cells. So once heavy metals enter our body, they get into our fat cells and our brain and our central nervous system is primarily made of fat cells. So these heavy metals get into our brain and central nervous system. So these heavy metals can dramatically impair cognitive functioning and play a role in contributing to Alzheimer's and different forms of dementia. So the first thing you have to do is in, you know, reduce the influx of toxins into your body. And so I have a great guide down below at how to detox your home because these heavy metals are found in everyday items or in our water they're in our food that can be in cadmium can be in your coffee or drinking every day aluminum is in your antiperspirant you're putting on your body every day and you can have aluminum cookware there's so many different places that heavy metals are lurking so download my guide 
in the description to learn some simple ways that you can detox your home. So if you wanna know your heavy metal body burden of heavy metals, I highly recommend doing a hair tissue mineral analysis, or also called an HTMA. This is a great place to start to figure out what heavy metals you have, if you have any of the heavy metals that contribute to dementia or Alzheimer's, so that you can have awareness of that and then you know, create a roadmap to detox those heavy metals, you might be surprised by the results. You can get a link to that in the description below. So number three, make sure you're getting enough vitamin D. One of the risk factors for developing Alzheimer's is a low vitamin D level. There's an association there. I'm not a big fan of supplementing vitamin D. You can get it in foods like cod liver oil and whatnot and fatty fish. So getting natural sunlight is what I recommend for getting your vitamin D exposure. Today, we don't spend enough time outdoors. We're indoors, on our computers, watching television, doing other things while our ancestors spend all day long outdoors. So get outside and get some sun. So number four, you wanna protect your microbiome. So this is really important because your gut plays a huge role in your brain health. And so you need to have a healthy intact gut lining to have a healthy barrier from the things from the outside world and your body. And when you have, you get leaky gut or you get kind of little holes or perforations in your gut lining, that also means you can likely have a leaky blood brain barrier where heavy metals and toxins and bacteria can more easily enter your brain interfering in your brain functions. So the health of your gut bacteria can impact almost every system in your body. And there's a ton of research linking gut health and developing Alzheimer's. So my recommendation is to eat lots of omega-3 fats and foods high in cholesterol. And I know this is contrary to a lot of things you might be hearing on the internet about you gotta lower your cholesterol. That is a bunch of nonsense, okay? You need to be eating egg yolks. Um, my favorite is caviar fish eggs. Those are the foods highest in cholesterol and eating omega-3 fats from fatty fish. Those are some of the best ways to give your cell membranes and your gut lining the nutrition that it needs to be strong and healthy. You also want to eat an anti-inflammatory diet. So lots of fruits and vegetables and grass-fed organic meats as well. You also want to eat foods that help populate healthy gut bacteria, like eating fermented foods. I love raw sauerkraut. I love eating like raw coconut kefir. I'm not as big as fan of uh, probiotics because those tend to give you like one or two strains and they're not, you don't get nearly as many probiotics as you do eating natural foods. So I'm a, more of a fan of eating fermented foods. Number five, you wanna manage stress and boost your immune system as well. So let's talk about stress levels. So it might seem like stress is purely emotional, but it produces a biochemical reaction in your body. It raises stress levels, it raises adrenaline, it raises cortisol levels, that lowers immunity, and it causes this whole cascade of effects that tank your health. We know that stress is one of the number one killers for a reason. So biochemicals released during a stress response increase inflammation in your body and cause this whole downward cascade spiral in your health for a number of different ways. So that's why it's so important to reduce the stress response. And I have some tips on how to do that. I'm gonna go over some in this video, but if you want some more tips, check out this video right here, how to reduce your cortisol levels and stress in five minutes. So it's a super quick video. that will give you a lot of tips. So to reduce stress, you can try meditation, you can try breath work, you can try yoga, you can try journaling, you can try a gratitude, sitting out in nature, getting in the ocean, uh, taking a break, <laughs> taking a vacation, sitting out in the sunlight is very, very stress reducing. There's a lot of different things you can do, but really at the root of stress, of a lot of people's stress is emotional trauma or just anything that people were not emotionally ready to deal with at the time can leave this imprint in the body, causing you to have a more sensitive or overreaction to stressors in your life. And so I created a program called the Emotional Detox Program that goes, you know, really gets the underlying root cause of why so many people feel stressed today to help to release emotional traumas, negative emotions, and, and so many more things. There are so many tips on how to do vagus nerve stimulation to lower the stress set point. Just lots of tips 
in this 30-hour course that I created over the last 10 years. So you can check that out at emo-detox.com. There's also a link in the description below. Lastly, I wanna point out that inflammation and immune overreactivity are two markers that are really high in Alzheimer's patients. Research suggests that there's a possible link between immune system activation, fighting infections in the body, and the development of Alzheimer's. So it's really important to do things to boost your immune system. So some great ways to do that, basics here, getting out in sunlight, exercising on a daily basis, even just a little walk, eating an anti-inflammatory diet, getting enough vitamin D in your diet through sunlight, reducing excess intake of alcohol and reducing your sugar levels. Those few things go a long way to boosting your immune system because most people are doing the exact opposite. And that's why dementia and Alzheimer's levels are at an all time high. So if you want more tips like these, you can watch my video right here, top five ways to improve brain function. I go into more detail about things you can do to boost your brain functioning. Okay, let's wrap it up. So some takeaways from this video are that so many people feel helpless when it comes to dementia or Alzheimer's. If their family member has it, they maybe feel like that's next for them, it's coming their way. There's so much you can do. You are not powerless in the face of an Alzheimer's diagnosis, or if you feel like there's a genetic component in your family to where you're next, it's, you're gonna be developing this at some point. There's so much that you can do. Uh, detoxing your body, working on your diet and lifestyle, and working on emotional trauma. It's very, very important to work on all different aspects of your health. So far, the pharmaceutical industry has not found an effective solution to this disease, because it's not about a pill for every ill, it's about living a healthy lifestyle so that your body functions in the way that it's meant to. So developing amyloid plaques and glucose metabolism issues that occur in Alzheimer's patients is not normal. It, it is a byproduct of diet and lifestyle and emotional traumas. So PS, if you wanna learn more about how to detox your brain, I created a great video for that you can watch right here about how to detox your brain. So thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Wendy Myers of MyersDetox.com. I hope this video helped you. Please share this with your friends and family if you think any of them could be helped by the information in this video. And I'll catch you guys very, very soon.